I currently have over 570 hours in Disney Dreamlight Valley, and I finally can say that my valley is completely decorated. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you every single biome in my valley. We're gonna go through all of it, and of course, what better place to start than the plaza? The plaza is actually one of the main areas that I've done the most decorating in and have had the most different iterations of it because I just never could get my plaza quite right. There was always something off about it and I feel like I finally have something that I really like and it started out with these fairy lights, these little arches that we got with fairy godmother and I love them and I started off with just this centerpiece right here that leads you from the castle down towards the meadow and I feel like I needed something like that in the center right here. So that's where it started. I just have four of these here and I've decorated each different section with some benches and bushes, lots of foliage. You're gonna see throughout my tour that I love all of the foliage in this game and I use it a lot because it's honestly easier for me to decorate with bushes and trees, the beach grass, butterfly flowers, all of that stuff is just easier for me to use than the items typically. I try to use the items when I can, but I love the natural feeling of all the foliage. Now I am using this brick pathing here, which is not one of the paths that I use typically because I don't feel like it feels as natural, but I think that was appropriate for the plaza and the vibe that I wanted to go with here. Right to the left of the centerpiece, I have Scrooge's store. Now, even though I wanted this to feel structured and more put together, I still wanted it to feel overgrown. So I put this beach grass right in front of the door. <laughs> so you know that Scrooge isn't really taking care of it, okay? Things are getting out of hand and he needs to do a better job of cutting the grass around his store. But I really like the way that it looks, just everything, all of the nature kind of overtaking this really pretty plaza. That's what I wanted it to feel like. Next to the store, I just have some different items. You know, I've got the bike and a popcorn stand. I have this little flower cart right here. I just have a bunch of different areas because I have all of these spaces which were harder to fill. And it was hard for me to put trees in this section because anything I did would block the view to the meadow. And I didn't want that because I wanted it to feel pretty open still. So I just had to find things that were shorter that I could fit in here. So I have this little flower flower shop and over here is Kristoff's stall. I love it here behind the shop because I can just go to the shop every day and then I come back here to Kristoff's stall and I try to buy everything. Speaking of buying everything, I need to go ahead and get all the rest of the stuff that I didn't get earlier. Shopping at Kristoff's is the easiest way to get materials and I highly recommend doing it every day if you're not already doing so. Another thing that I wanted to do with my entire valley but it started in my plaza and in my meadow was, I went back and forth on whether I wanted to have an orchard, if I wanted to have all of these bushes and trees all together in one spot, but I ended up deciding that I wanted to have them along all of my pathways. So as I was running around, I could just easily grab them, get all of the different fruits and everything that I needed, just running around doing my daily tasks. And I really love the way that turned out because they're all just kind of spread out along the valley and I think it looks really nice. Next up, we have the Monsters Inc. apartment and I wanted this to feel really overgrown. I feel like the Monsters Inc. apartment looks kind of abandoned in nature. Maybe that's just me. The way that the door is stylized, I don't know. It just kind of gave me an abandoned vibe and so I wanted that to continue into the front yard. So I just have a little seating area and then just overgrown beach grass everywhere, some barrels. I don't know if necessarily this apartment fits right here because everything else is a shop, but it made sense at the time to have this tall building right here to kind of match the one that's on the other side was my thinking. You're gonna notice that there's not a lot of good reasoning for the things that I do <laughs> throughout my valley. I just kind of go with whatever I'm feeling and whatever I think looks good in the moment and that's kind of it. On the other side, opposite of the Monsters Inc. apartment, I have Remy's restaurant and I have just this pretty fountain right in the middle. 
I love the butterfly flowers surrounding the fountain. I would give anything to have these flowers in different colors because they are my favorite to decorate with. Absolutely love them. Shea Remy's restaurant right here and then just a seating area. Love the pergola too. I really tried to use a lot of the items that I loved in this main plaza build because I don't know, I just feel like it's one of the big centerpieces of your valley is your plaza. I also have this carriage and clock tower section and this was really just a space filler and me trying to put something pretty right here. I was running out of pretty things to do and things that made sense. So that's what I ended up with. I love it actually. I think the trees here and the clock tower, I think it looks nice. And they are all right in front of Remy's house, which is another one that's just kind of, it's here because the aesthetic of the building makes sense to be here, even though I wish his house looked different and it didn't have to be here, but I like it. I think it, I think it looks nice. And then he just has a little picnic reading sitting area outside of his house. And that's kind of it. I mean, one thing I do want to point out too is it was really important to me when I was designing my valley for every mining node, everything that I needed to access for it to be easily accessible. Nothing is blocked off to the point where I can't get to it. And I really, really like that. That is ideal for me. I do think sometimes it's still difficult to navigate around, but I am able to access everything when I need to. Next up is my favorite, favorite biome that I've decorated. I feel like it's the most complete, it's the most cohesive, and it is my meadow. And the idea of this started with these butterfly flowers and wanting to kind of have a butterfly flower field, almost like you would have a tulip field, something like that. So I just started stacking tons of them together in these little sections and then creating the path around them. And it was kind of a back and forth of figuring out where do I want the path to be? Where do I want all these little sections to be? And I love how natural and just pretty this turned out. You're also going to have to pardon my mess because I did not feel like cleaning up all of these little twigs everywhere and the mist bubbles and everything. It was just too much. So it just is how it is in this game. You're just going to have stuff everywhere and I've accepted it. <laughs> I have accepted it. Uh, same thing, like I said earlier, I needed every mining node to be accessible. So it's something that I really both struggled with and also feel like I accomplished. And I'm really proud of that because it was so important to me that it was like that. Also, when I was designing this area, I kind of just wanted it to feel like a cozy neighborhood. So I started putting tons of the villager houses, really like the Mickey and Friends houses in this biome. So I have Donald in the pond right here. I've got my main house, which is this one. I actually don't put a skin on my main house because I love the way that the gable front house looks and I like to have as many buildings as possible in my valley. So I have this one as my house. I have the mushroom house skin right here next to it. I got this one later and it actually filled this spot quite nicely. I have Mickey over here and they all just kind of have these tiny little front yards or just whatever I thought made sense in the moment when I was decorating. Goofy has his house and then his stall right next to it, which I, I think this is so cute right here. I actually really love Goofy's house. It's one of my favorites. It just fits him so nicely. And I liked having Goofy right here by this pond. Goofy loves fishing. And then he has this little wagon with the fish right here. I wish we had a fishing rod that we kind of, kind of set down next to the pond. That would be really cute. I also have Minnie's house and hers is kind of angled a different way because it was all feeling very samey. And so I wanted hers to feel a little bit different. And lastly, in this area, we have Merlin and his got a little bit more of a special treatment because his house is just so whimsical and pretty. So I included these purple trees, purple bushes. His is really, really overgrown and he has all of these books around. Plus the well, I wanted to give that a nice spot and I think the well just matches his house so nicely. But he has this cute 
entrance into his house. And I just really love the way that this biome turned out. Like I said, it's one of my favorites and one of the first ones that I completed. Now coming down from Merlin's house, we have the Glade of Trust. And again, this one, I wanted to feel overgrown, swampy, but at the same time, I wanted it to feel magical and mystical and just full of whimsy. And I feel like it, I feel like it really came across. We have the beautiful fairy house over here. Everything is overgrown. I even included some of the new trees and foliage from the DLC, which I didn't really include in any other biomes, I don't think, because this was one of the last ones that I decorated. So prior to this, I didn't really have access to those items and I didn't want to go back and change anything. So, but I did use some of the trees here, some of the other little plants. I included Woody's carousel in here. I literally don't know where to put this thing. I This one is not for me. I like it on its own, but I really can never find a way to fit it into the valley. It just, it doesn't go with anything else. So I'm always very confused as to how to fit it in. So that's right there. And then I also, I mean, honestly, the Glade is the biome of misfit houses for me. Um, it was like all of the ones that I didn't know where to put them at the end, and I just threw them all in together, <laughs> including Wally's house, which is, it's a house. It, I mean, it's not a house. It's a, what even do you call that? A tractor? It's a tractor. I also have this big jungle, like centerpiece foliage thing. This thing is huge. Like all of this stuff is one big thing for the most part. And I love this. Like if you have a biome that you're trying to fill, this one's perfect for the glade too. It's so pretty and full and you don't even have to do anything. You just plop this thing down and it does all the work for you. I added a couple rocks and stuff around it, but I love it. I have Goofy's stall right here. Just like all of the different mining nodes, I wanted Goofy's stall to kind of be accessible and cute and part of the biome too. So I typically have kind of a path leading up to it. I also have Fairy Godmother's pumpkin house over here. And I really like including the orange bushes next to her house, like the vine lamps and the orange bushes with this light green too. Oh, I love it. I think her house looks so good down here. I went back and forth on keeping it in the Forgotten Lands, but I'm really happy that I put it in the Glade. I think it looks really good. I also decorated across next to Mother Gothel's house. I included a little bit of purple. These, this biome in particular isn't the most cohesive of biomes because I've got the orange and the green and the purple, but I feel like because of her house, it kind of needed the purple. And I have some different tangled items here, like this rug, the painting table. It's kind of this little painting area. So I thought the purple looked nice right there. Over here, I even have the new cottage, which is definitely my favorite house skin that exists. It's so pretty. They've been doing such an amazing job with all of the different house skins and I thought it fit perfectly within this biome. And that's really it for the Glade. We're gonna head straight down here to Dazzle Beach next. And I actually never anticipated that I would have a path on my beach because I typically just do a very basic beach design. Just a little bit of like overgrown grass, maybe some of the pebble rocks but I ended up going all in with the pathing path and I'm actually really happy that I did. I feel like it kind of brought it all together and it just gave it some purpose. I have this little fruit and veggie stand right here just because this entire area was nothing but path and I needed something to go there. And then I continued the path all the way along the beach. I have the beach house skin right here. Another one of my favorites. I think they did such a good job with this one. And then this little boat. Oh my gosh, the boats next to the dock. I love it. I think those are so cute. This area is super overgrown. They already have this grass right here, but adding all of the other beach grass, I don't know. I just, I'm just a sucker for an overgrown beach area. I don't have too much over here next to Moana's house. I just put her boat in front of it. A couple palm trees. She doesn't need much. She's just on her own island over here. What else, what else do I need to give her? And then if you cross over here, 
This is Stitch's house, and this one was designed actually for a dream snap. One of the first dream snaps, it was the beach one. I initially designed this. I ended up changing it last minute, not using it, and then I used it for a different one later. But I do really love Stitch's house and how this turned out. I think of the character houses, like of the main villager houses in the valley, I think Stitch's house might be my favorite. I have some random just hammocks, palm trees, We've got the coconut trees throughout. And then I have Eric's house right across from Ariel's house. And then I just have this path kind of connecting the two. And I do really love how this turned out. I think Eric's house looks perfect here in this little grassy section even though his house is another one that's not my favorite. I don't know, maybe I just don't like a lot of the character houses, I don't know. But the beach was a last minute endeavor and I think adding all of the path, the rocks and bushes just kind of really pulled it all together and I'm really happy with how Dazzle Beach turned out. Next up, we have the Forest of Valor, which is actually my favorite biome just in general. Like prior to decorating, I love the feeling of the forest. It's just 10 out of 10 with the vibes. This biome, I will say, is all over the place in regards to what I have in it because I have the Beauty and the Beast castle. <laughs> I also have the flower shop right here, but then... I have this fencing, which kind of separates into a different section of the forest was kind of what I was going for because everything kind of shifts once you go over there, but then it kind of changes again in another section. You're going to see what I'm talking about. I did try to use some different rocks to also distinguish, and you'll notice all throughout my valley, I do this pathing with the rocks and the bushes and the ferns lining the pathing just because I know that we have the paths with the borders but I like that feeling of a natural like windy path and I feel like this is one of the only ways to get that so I just did it everywhere because it's my favorite so I did that up here this is where things change so I'm using the lighter color rocks and kind of brighter foliage in this section because if you turn this way, this is how I decided to try to make the candy houses work because I'm not a huge fan of the candy houses if I'm being honest, but I tried to fit them into my aesthetic as best I can. I added all of the different greens with the foliage and everything. I felt like getting the premium shop candy house to go next to it did help. And then I added in these cardboard things too. I don't really know what this section is. <laughs> I mean, I like looking at it, but I also don't know if it really fits with anything else. I mean, I think it's fine. It's good, right? Vanellope has her little cottage core candy part of the forest. I think she loves it. I'm going to say that she does. So then if you go this way, like I was talking about, if you cross over this bridge, everything kind of shifts again into a very traditional cottage core forest vibe. I've got the camper over here to the right and on the other side of the camper, I've got some more decoration. I've got the original cottage right here and then behind the cottage is where I actually have the icy fortress right here. I added the different snowy trees back here just so it made a little bit more sense because I wanted to feel like it was really transitioning from the forest to the frosted heights because right now it's just kind of really harsh of a transition and I don't know I, I think these trees help to make it feel a little bit more realistic over here in front of Buzz's camper this was another dream snap area I actually don't keep many of my dream snap areas because what looks good in a photo to me doesn't always translate in your valley so this was one of them and I like it just a little camping area I think it's pretty cute right here and I know I said I wasn't going to clean up but can we just all collectively take a minute to be annoyed by these giant ice shards that block everything so I am going to quickly clean up my frosted heights before I show y'all that Okay, I got all of the ice cleaned up at least. There's probably still some mess all around everywhere, but the ice is gone. And the Frosted Heights is the biome that I did the least amount of effort because it's just not one of my favorites. So I think my biggest issue was trying to balance this icy blue, the frosty trees with 
this foliage that they have that's not icy or frosty at all. I love the coloring of it, but it just doesn't quite go together for me and I just did my best to mix it all in because I did feel like I needed foliage. I needed greenery, but it wasn't quite the right shade of foliage, if that makes any sense. I have this frozen fountain right at the entrance. I wanted kind of a statement piece as you walk up here. And then to the right, I have Anna's castle. This is one of my favorite areas in this biome specifically because I used this icy section and just surrounded it with rocks. So it felt like the castle had kind of frozen the entire area. And I do love the way this looks. However, because I don't have anything here, it's one of the most annoying sections to keep clean because just like this, everything spawns right here, right on top of it. So if you don't want things to spawn, you're gonna need to put stuff over here. But if you don't mind that, then I really love the way this looks with the rocks surrounding it. Coming out this way, I just have a seating area with, you know, we got Kristoff's sled over there. I decided to put the cherry trees up here for the pops of pink, but just a simple seating area right next to the well and goofy stall. Nothing to write home about, just kind of filling the space. Walking over this way, I do have a Mickey fountain, just as kind of another centerpiece. And then I just have this frozen walkway. I have the new premium shop castle, the one that shoots fireworks. This one works perfectly because of the bright blue lights on the side. It looks great in this biome. Plus some of these fairy godmother lights again. And I have the ice rink right here, which is a, such a great item. I love how big it is and it just, it's a good space filler. These giant items are so nice at filling space. Like if you're having trouble decorating a biome, go through your inventory and try to find the larger items. <laughs> just place them down, put a couple trees around and you're done. That's really it for the Frosted Heights. Like I said, the Frosted Heights was low effort, low energy, and like medium reward. I think it looks decent, but it's definitely not my favorite biome. Next up, we have the Sunlit Plateau, which is another one of my favorites, and I think I just love how refreshing it feels to come into this biome. I do have a lot of pathing here, but I still wanted it to feel very open and airy. I just love the texture and the vibe and the colors of everything in here. It's so bright and fun. Um, I do have the Casita in here. I have Wally's garden right next to it, but I don't have too much in here in terms of furniture. It really is a lot of bushes, trees. I do have some harvestables. And then once you cross over the river, I have even less because again, I wanted this to feel just nice and open and not too much going on. Like I'm I'm telling myself that it's okay to have empty space. Not everything has to be full and cluttered. We do have Simba and Nala's house right here because obviously it fits perfectly in the Sunlit Plateau. And then I do have one little section with waterfalls. I included this friendship reward waterfall right next to the other one because I just felt like it made it a huge statement right here. Like, are you kidding me? Look at all of this water trickling down. I really like how this area turned out. And of course, I did not move Scar's house because I don't know where else I would put it. It just fits so amazingly right here in the elephant graveyard. And I didn't want to move it. I wanted it to feel super elephant graveyardy. For lack of a better way to say it, okay? I don't know. Authentic is a good way. I wanted it to feel authentic. And I think it does. Once you go through the elephant graveyard, you come up here into the Forgotten Lands, and I did not know what I was doing when I put this one together, but it was one of those ones that just came together so easily as I started doing it. I have the overgrown haunted mansion skin in here. I've got a lot of houses in here. We have the Tower of Terror, the Hollywood Tower Hotel, which is not a house skin, it's just an item, but I do consider it a big building. I also wanted to make sure to keep at least one pumpkin patch or some way for me to make money. So I have this pumpkin patch here when and if I ever need it, go ahead and harvest pumpkins and then I just replant them. But I wanted it to also look nice because I think sometimes if they're functional, they don't look as nice. But I think this kind of serves both. I think it looks decent. It's not too big where it looks strange. 
and I just put a ton of stuff around it uh, just to make sure it felt like it belonged here. That was really important to me. Um, I also have this, which is the tree house that you can't move. So I really had to work around it and I think my solution of putting rocks around it and making it a centerpiece really turned out nice and I actually don't hate it right here. Recently we got Jack Skellington and I just plopped his house down right here because it fit perfectly and there's plenty of room in here for tons of houses because I also have the castle, scary spooky castle, whatever this house skin is. And I just have some spooky decorations around it, a couple of the spooky trees. I didn't want it to feel super Halloween themed, but I did want it to feel kind of ominous, dark, a little bit of spooky is what I was going for. Because I've got the thorns, a bunch of different elements that made it feel overgrown, spooky rather than Halloween spooky. Does that make any sense? I don't know. I really like this biome. All right, that is it. That is my completed valley all of the biomes decorated i would love to know what your favorite biome is down in the comments below i hope y'all enjoyed this completed valley tour it took me so long to do this i never thought i would finally finish it and i did so i'm really really proud that i'm finally done don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one bye